Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jasim Azawi. Kurdistan claims democracy and prosperity. Critics charge it is nothing more than illusion wrapped in corruption and nepotism. Charges of torture are thrown at the KRG, but Kurdish officials claim it is not endemic and promise to weed out the few bad apples. The Kurds profess they want to be part of Iraq. Experts warn they are just waiting for the right moment to break away. Rabia Ragah reports. They call it the other Iraq, and it's easy to see why. The northern region of Kurdistan emerged as a peaceful haven in a country otherwise marred by bombings and sectarian violence. After a no-fly zone was established in 1991, Iraq's Kurdish region has enjoyed a de facto autonomy. They established their own parliament, raised their own flag, and took up their own security. Based in Erbil, the Kurdistan regional government controls three provinces, Sulaymaniya, Erbil, and Duhuk. The area has become a magnet for investors, with cranes dotting the landscape and markets abuzz with shoppers. It's even become a favorite tourist destination for Iraqis seeking to escape the rampant violence elsewhere in the country. It is estimated that the regional government has approved more than $4 billion worth of development projects in the past year alone. But there are concerns that these fortunes aren't necessarily trickling down to the ordinary citizens. There is no equality. There is no equal opportunity. You go to Kurdish area, there is two families, one Barzani, one Taliban's family, a male-dominated party, not a single woman. It is no secret that the region's president, leader of the Kurdistan Democratic Party, Mas'ud Barzani, has ruled with an iron fist. Supporters would say media restrictions and the heavy-handedness of his militia were needed to secure a region at the heart of conflict. But opponents flatly accuse him of running a police state. Experts also say the post-invasion investment euphoria meant the government rushed into development projects without proper planning, which led to corruption and graft. Still, Kurdish officials boast theirs is the only success story in Iraq, even saying one day their region will compete with Dubai as a business and tourism hub. Rawi Ragah for Inside Iraq. To examine the reality of Kurdistan's democracy, torture and corruption, I'm joined from Erbil by Fuad Hussein, Chief of Staff of the President of KRG, and from London by Kurdish affairs experts Fereydun Hilmi. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. Fereydun Hilmi in London, what lies behind this ostensible democracy? Are we looking at a proper democracy or this is nothing more than a facade, an illusion of it? Well, it is, it is nothing uh, like a democracy at all that uh, I know of. Um, it is a very weird kind of system based on two parties ruling and, uh, and pretending to be government. Um, uh, you, have, you have a parliament that is appointed by the, the two leaders uh, according to a quota. You have uh, uh, people who are not in touch with the uh, MPs. They don't know them. And if they did know them, they wouldn't be able to see them and, and actually uh, lobby them. You have uh, um, everything, uh, all the civil societies and all the unions and the societies that represent different people like lawyers and nurses and others, they are divided into two sections. One belongs to the uh, KDP and one belongs to the uh, PUK. Um, there is absolutely no um, independent um, uh, thinking there. Everybody have, have to uh, follow one or, of the other or, or the other parties. Uh, appointment is, is based uh, upon that. It is uh, nepotism. Intellectuals have to actually link themselves to one or the other of the parties to be able to get a job. The business has been uh, um, hijacked by the parties because they actually uh, make it a condition on every businessman that he must share half of his profits. Uh, there's a UN. This is a long uh, list of charges for Adi Hussein. Perhaps I can summarize it for you. Basically, what he's saying that two families are ruling Kurdistan. Al Masoud Mas Barzani's families and Jalal Talbani, and between them, they have divided this big pie. Um, let me go back to the argument which has been used by a lady. I heard her voice. And she said, 
um, she said there isn't any single woman in, in, in uh, political life of Kurdistan. Uh, by the way, we have got 111 members of the parliament. 29 of them, they are uh, women. We have got a cabinet with five women in the, in the cabinet. Ministers. You made the point. So, Could uh, you uh, answer I what mean, Dr. I mean, Helmi said? True. Then I am I'm, I'm coming to the second point. Uh, as far as the parliament, the parliament has been, there was, a, as everybody knows, there was an election in Iraq. And uh, in Kurdistan, which was part, I mean, part of the election has been held also in Kurdistan. So the parliament has been chosen. But the, the model Why of chosen no here in Kurdistan is under, uh, let, me, let me finish, please, uh, Mr. Freydun. Um, no, just a question. When, you say there was when, an election. When, 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 but, but there was election in 2005 in Iraq, and this parliament, but we're talking about this parliament. why not for 12 years there was no election? Tell me, uh, please, please let me finish. Otherwise, I'm not going to discuss these matters with Go you. Ahead. I know, you, I know your background. I know, I, know, I know your father. He is a famous man. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know you. So let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, there was an le election uh, in 2005. This parliament has been chosen by Kurdish and people of Kurdistan through election. It is true that the two dominant party, they are the majority, the party of the majority in Kurdistan, but there are many other parties in the parliament. There are various parties in the government. There are various political parties, Islamic party, communist party, all these parties are here. Having said that, having said that, that doesn't mean we are a democratic society. We say always, we chose the path of democracy. We are in a process of building this society. We are in transitional period. Uh, it, is, it, uh, it is a difficult time for the Kurds, for Iraqis. We are trying to build our society in a new way. Everybody grants you that, Fouad Hussein, and that is that yes. society okay. is, is democratizing. But the main yes. charge remains that this whole thing is revolving around two families, Freydun Helmi. Uh, when, when you hear that argument by Fouad Hussein, hold on just a second. D does he convince you that uh, they are doing their best? Well, the thing, the thing is they're, they're always telling us that this is the transitional period and that um, wait another five years and another ten years and everything will be fine and we are dem democratizing and so on. But from day one they, they, they started a, a parliament and they said there were elections, which, the results of which they did not accept. Then 13 years they stayed without a parliament uh, uh, and without another election. The first election was supposed to last only for six months, the first parliament, and it lasted for 13 years. For four years there was no parliament at all because they were fighting each other over money. And now we have What another do you mean election. over money? What do you mean over money? Well, they're fighting. The civil war was just about money. It was about... Uh, it was about property and money. It was about privileges. It was p about control of the Kurdish people. Which kind of war? I mean, he's talking about the a war which happened I'm in 1994. So, uh, and why he is not talking about working together now, uh, having a united front together, having a Kurdish alliance together, working We've had together 17 in years of working, this. working together? Please, please, Mr. Uh, Helmi, uh, uh, listen to me. Um, working together in Kurdistan, working together even with the Shiite and Sunni, bringing them together, we became the factor of stability in Iraq and in Kurdistan. So why he is going back all the time to the fighting period? I don't deny the history. Of course there was fighting. In that case, let me bring you something fighting. current for Hussein, and that is we, a published we took, report we took, we had by the some United conclusion from that. There is unpublished yes. report by the United Nations that has been leaked to to the media. Basically, says. Um, thousands of Kurds, almost on a monthly basis, they have been detained for political crimes, meaning to say anybody who uh, criticizes the current government uh, will receive the sharp end of that government. I don't know about which report are, are you talking, because you are talking about a report which has not been published. That's right. Uh, first, we must see that, uh, first, we must see that report, then I can comment on that report. But having said that, we don't, we don't deny that there was, and there is sometimes violation of human rights. We recognize that. We even, we are in good terms with Would you with recognize human that our torture various, also? Various, 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 various human rights organizations. And we said we are going to take all kinds of measure, legal measure and other kinds of measure, 
to stop this. Uh, we are doing our best to change our society. Let me see if you have we convinced Faridun our Helmi. Mistakes. We, reco we recognize our mistakes. Faridun Helmi, the we, at the same time, we are trying to correct it. A human rights organization uh, charges that there is systematic uh, torture in Kurdistan's uh, uh, prisons, uh, not only limited to the Kurds, but also to Turkmans and Arabs. How do you look at that? Well, uh, you just heard uh, Fuad Hussein saying that uh, we should be working together. Working together means I have to be as corrupt as the administration. I have to accept bribery. I have to um, apply nepotism in work. I have to do exactly what they say and, and just simply enrich these two families. If the Kurds knew that the struggle for Kurdistan meant to make two people the most powerful and most rich uh, families in the world, then they would not, never have uh, followed these guys. They would never have fought for anything. They would never have uh, ra raised any, any arms against uh, the government. But that's all we are doing at the moment. We are simply making these two uh, families very, very rich. They are, they are taking $6 billion a year, and you don't have electricity or clean water. There is no sir, medicine. where have you there got that no number? Equipment. There are Why no are you hospitals. talking, sir? Sir, sir uh, listen to me. Where have you got all these numbers? You are talking about things which are doesn't. Where have you took this number? Where, where, from where is your six, I know. six billion dollars? Okay. From where? Okay, you said. From where? You Who, said don't which kind of sources have you got? All right, you see, let me I, I don't, you. I don't, uh, no, 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 I'm not going to listen to your Gentlemen, answer. I have to I, I, stop see, both no, of you. No, no, I'm no, going to no. take a short listen, break it now. Is, it is your and when time. we come back, we will be asking that question. I will be asking Fuad uh, Hussein whether the ostensible growth and economic boom we are seeing is reality or this is simply pure money gotten out of Baghdad. Stay with us. There may be some corruption here and there. We don't deny it. But Kurdistan is committed to an open business environment. Falah Mustafa Bakir, Head of Foreign Relations, Kurdistan Regional Government.